So you're watching the latest and greatest cryptocurrency videos on YouTube, and the creator keeps dropping terms you've never heard in your life and totally loses you from the get-go. What, pray tell, do all of those terms even mean? Let this be your lesson. Hey everybody, this is Sean from Crypto for the 99%. And in the video today, I'm going to be explaining to you a bunch of the terms and lingo that cryptocurrency investors use all of the time that most newbies don't know. But before we start, I would love it if you would go hit that subscribe button right below this video and click that little bell icon to be notified whenever I release new videos to the channel. So this is going to be a relatively short video, but I feel like it's a necessary one for any of you crypto noobs out there. While watching any cryptocurrency content on YouTube, you will almost certainly be bombarded by quote unquote the terms of the trade. And in reality, before ever investing anything into the crypto market, you should really know what they mean. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list, otherwise this video would probably be two hours long but I've chosen a good selection of terms that I think are important to know. So let's get at it. The first one is altcoins. You will hear this a lot. What this word means is very simple. An altcoin is literally any cryptocurrency that isn't Bitcoin. That's right. Bitcoin is so big that every other coin in existence is just considered alternate. The next one is all-time high. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It merely refers to any specific coin's all-time high price. The chart you're looking at here is Bitcoin in uh, late 2017 when it hit $20,000. But that's all an all-time high is, is the highest price that a specific coin has ever reached. The next one, and you will also hear this a lot, especially over the last year or so, is bear market. This is what we call it when the crypto market is in a downward trend, as you can see by that line in that arrow. It went down and just a little up and then down and down and sideways and down. That is a bearish market. Now, the exact opposite of that is a bull market. And obviously, as the opposite, this is when the market is in an upward trend. This is what happened in 2017 with pretty much every coin on the market. Everybody released a crypto coin. Every crypto coin pumped up to these massive volumes, and then it dumped. This next term is a fundamental one, and that's blockchain. Blockchain is a distributed cryptographic online ledger, basically a public database that stores cryptocurrency transactions and is the foundational building block of cryptocurrencies. Don't pay too much attention to all of the weirdly labeled stuff in the boxes in this photo. Just think of it as blocks of data that are linked together as a chain. The uses for blockchain can go much deeper than that, obviously, but that's a simple definition. We'll also talk about blockchain a lot in the future on this channel, and I intend on doing a very detailed video on the blockchain. Next up is fiat currency. You will also hear this a lot. This is what we call normal currency. So obviously you see a $20 bill in here. So the US dollar, the euro, the British pound, any other native currency of any country is what we call fiat. And this next one is actually one of my favorites, and that is FOMO, or otherwise known as fear of missing out. This is when a person sees the price of something going up, and out of an emotional bias or whatever it is they're feeling, they immediately invest in it because they don't want to miss the train. I will say one thing, this is not a sound long-term investment strategy for anyone investing in anything, but you will see this happen all the time during bull runs. 
and a cryptocurrency specific term that likes to get thrown around a lot is hodl or hold on for dear life it's basically a slang term that means holding on to tokens or coins depending on who you talk to it means hold on for dear life and that's how i prefer to say it but basically it is just a common term for those coin holders who resist selling their coins when the market fluctuates downward. They hold on to it, knowing or hoping that it's going to go back up. The next one's initial coin offering. This was big, big, big stuff back in 2015, 16, 17. What an initial coin offering is, is essentially crowdfunding in the crypto world. So a crypto startup will basically issue their own proprietary token in exchange for fiat investment into the company. So investors who purchase the token during an offering are basically the same as any other investor in any other market. They are hoping that the value of that coin goes up. There were an awful lot of initial coin offerings in the early days when everybody, it was basically the same thing as the dot-com boom. For a short period of time as everybody created a coin everybody did an initial coin offering billions of dollars got thrown around initial coin offerings do still happen but not nearly as frequently and they've got a big eye on them from the government to make sure that they don't repeat what happened during the boom so the next is one of the most important ones that i can bring up and that's market cap this word refers to the total monetary value of a coin's total supply or the total monetary value of the crypto market as a whole. So in this picture, we're looking at Bitcoin and we can see that the market cap is $176 billion, which is the basically 18.3 something million Bitcoin. Often this market cap is more important than the actual price of the coin itself. And in the future, we'll discuss a lot more about market cap, especially when it comes to much, much lower priced coins than Bitcoin. So next, and this is often attributed to Bitcoin, but is equally applicable to several other cryptocurrencies, and that's mining. I'm sure you've heard about mining cryptocurrency before. Mining refers to the process of a computer or a node verifying transactions on the blockchain in exchange for cryptocurrency rewards. It is a very technical subject, and honestly, mining is pretty much out of the reach of the general Joe Q public these days. Most coins that are mineable require such a huge amount of computing power that only big companies and giant mining farms can even pull it off anymore. I personally tried last year to mine a coin called Ravencoin, which is supposed to be one of the last coins that you're able to mine with just your computer. And I did successfully mine it to the tune of about two cents a day. Clearly not worth the power. The next one's Pump and Dump. This is when a coin gets a large amount of attention and sees an enormous price increase, which results in lots of coin holders selling and the price of the coin dropping back down. This can often be a scheme due completely to price manipulation that results in the same thing, a gigantic peak and a gigantic plummet immediately after. This next one goes into the lores of cryptocurrency history. And that's Satoshi Nakamoto. So Satoshi Nakamoto is the person who created Bitcoin. But nobody knows who he really is, or even if he's just one person. If, is it a business? Is it a giant group? Is it a secret society? Whatever it is, nobody knows who this is, but his name, the name, is often attributed to the creation of Bitcoin. Also, a Satoshi is the smallest possible unit of a Bitcoin, equaling one one hundred millionth of a single Bitcoin. As you can see right there. So only a couple more left. The next one is Stablecoin. This is a crypto coin that is backed by fiat currency, whether that be the dollar or the British pound or any other fiat currency. 
These coins are usually worth whatever the price of one fiat is. So in the US's case, these coins are almost always worth a dollar. And they rarely fluctuate in either direction because of their backing. So while they may fluctuate down or up, it's usually only hundredths to a tenth of a cent that it fluctuates in either direction. And finally, a very fundamental term that you need to know if you're going to ever be in cryptocurrency, and that's the wallet. There are two kinds. The first one is a software wallet, which is something with software that's on your phone or your laptop, which is where you store your cryptocurrency. Second type is a hardware wallet, which is a physical device that is used and allows you to store your cryptocurrencies offline for more security. All cryptocurrency has to be stored in a wallet. When you keep your cryptocurrency on an exchange, however, as opposed to on your computer or on a physical device, it is still kept and stored in a wallet. It's just a wallet that's hosted on the exchange itself instead of on your computer or on a physical device like this. So, those are some of the terms that you should know, since you will be hearing them an awful lot if you watch crypto content on YouTube or read crypto articles on the internet. And of course, like I mentioned, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. Otherwise, this video would probably be two hours long. But I tried to trim it down into some very key ones that you should probably know. So, all right. Be sure to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button down below. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below also. And, as always, stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.